You'll no doubt be familiar with the classic three R's, the cornerstones of a solid school education, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Of course, there's a much better spelt list nowadays, the three R's of sustainability, reduce, reuse, recycle. And I think you can add a fourth R to that list, repurpose, a concept that spawned a whole new area of design thinking. And this is a very good example. This shipping container, once very good at keeping water out, has now been repurposed as a swimming pool. And so it's equally good at keeping water in. Very clever and sustainable. And so you'd have to say, in this era of environmental responsibility, necessity has become the mother of the fifth R, reinvention. The southern city of Dunedin may have a pretty challenging climate, but there's lots to love here. And if you spend some time, you may just not want to leave. That's certainly what Tessa Kingsbury found. Dunedin was the place that finally stopped her years of international globe trotting. I love it because it's little. I love it because it's almost like something that the rest of the world's forgotten. There's forests, there's hikes, and I love the old buildings. I love the old stuff. I haven't found a drawback. Tess is an architect who specialises in the design of hospitals, a career that's seen her living and working in no less than 15 different countries in 25 years. But in late 2017, she came home. This time, she said, for good. I didn't realise I'd been a gypsy for so long until I started connecting with people that had been in one place for a long time. Nothing would make me short circuit more than someone saying, where do you call home? And I'd go, I, uh, I wouldn't know what to say. Tessa's plan was to work on the new Dunedin Public Hospital, a 10-year project. She started visiting the city regularly, loved it, and by 2020, she was living here, working on the new hospital and looking for somewhere to build her own home. A home with one very specific requirement. My dream is to build a house around a glass house and merge the glass house into the house. I just love them as places of nurture and places of growth. Their sole purpose is to nurture plants. Unlike houses, which are to keep people alive and nurture people, when you merge the two, you get a little bit of magic happening. Tess diligently set to work locating the right site for her glass house house. But struggling to find anything anywhere near her budget, she put out the word that she was now considering all options. One of my colleagues sent me a link to this weird building, so they obviously knew that I was a bit mad and a bit quirky, and I obviously felt comfortable enough to say, here's a weird building, you should have a look at this. I walked around the outside and she was really dark, really damp. She had a lot of character. For many years, this weird building was a Sunday school hall belonging to St Michael's and All Angels Church in the suburb of Anderson's Bay. When I saw this, you know, I've done up a lot of furniture in my life and this is just a bigger version of that. This is doing up a big bit of furniture that was a Sunday school and making it a home. So they rang me and said that I was the lucky owner of 70-year-old Sunday school hall. 27 buckets, 500 rats. To the glory of God, 1924, this is not your average driveway. Hi, Tessa. How are you? Hi, Tom. Good. How are you? Very good. So we're here at Sunday School. We are. We are. This is the St Michael's Hall Sunday School. Yeah. The roof, it looks a little bit tired. Yes. But it's a great shape. I'm really intrigued as to what this space is like inside. And then you've got this huge tree. Great. Have you met Rex? This, the tree is called Rex. This is Rex. Come and, come and meet Rex. So Rex, Rex. we're going to keep Rex. Everyone wanted to 
to cut him down. So why Rex? Well, he's on the northwest corner and he wrecks the view, he wrecks the sunlight, he wrecks the lawn, he wrecks the path, um, and he wrecks some plans, actually. So this is this wrecks is Rex. the tree, and that's outside. Yep. But actually, I really want to see this building. Come inside. Ah, so the vestibule and then... This? Wow, yeah, what a space. Isn't she a beauty? Amazing, and I'm seeing chairs, but also buckets everywhere. Well, yes, 25 buckets in a roasting tin for the 26 leaks. I see. A building that leaks. There's a lot to unpick here. Tessa's renovation retains the hall's original shape, but turns one end into studio guest accommodation, with the living room, kitchen and bathroom on one level, and bedroom on the mezzanine above. Floor to ceiling framing containing a mosaic of glass panels separates the studio from the glass house. Above, a new steel framework supports the roof. That, true to the original design, curves down to become the walls as well. In the glass house itself, Tess is planning one big tree, several ferns, raised beds, and concrete paving to create a lush and spacious green room. Tess's own residence has the laundry and ample storage in the basement, and on top, a deck running across to the front door. This opens into the kitchen and onto the lounge, ensuite bathroom, walk-in wardrobe, and master bedroom. Like the studio, the residence also has a glass wall, providing views into the glass house. The exterior includes new dormer windows, matte black corrugated iron roofing on both ends, and an elegant grid of steel and toughened glass above the plants. Certainly a home with a difference, respecting its heritage and embracing the future. I have to say, this is a very unusual project. Just how bad a shape is this building in? The bits that I'm not keeping are pretty bad. Which is what? The timber. OK. The linings. Yes. The roof. Yes. <laughs> Fundamentally, it's a really simple design. Mm. Its framework is here, and the fact that I've got some really sound foundations and the stuff that really isn't affected by weather or time are the stuff that is being kept. So your role is as architect, of course, and project manager? Yes, I think it will be a bit of a blended role, and mm. I think it, the struggle is finding someone that wants to carve out that glass in such a way, put it together on top of my barrel. OK. <laughs> How much did it cost? This beauty was $353,000. Three, five, three. Which is the most money I've ever paid for something I, I can't live in. So what's the budget for the renovation itself? Studio, 150000 and the residence, 250000 And then I sort of looked at the space that the glass house would be in, and so I'd go, oh, I've got no idea, so I whacked 80 on it. <laughs> OK, so to add that up, that's 480000 with a big stab at the 80, what's the contingency? Not very far, Tom. You're very clear in that. <laughs> and how long will it take? I was originally saying it would be a six month build. I think now because of COVID and because of everything else, I would say I would be a lot more comfortable saying an 18 month build. Tessa's exploring some pretty unorthodox concepts here. I mean, a building with a forest in the middle that leaks. These concepts are diametrically opposed to standard pragmatic architecture. And we've got to celebrate it. But she's got to live it. And with it, overcome all the additional challenges that her unique choice will inevitably throw at her. By the middle of 2022, Tess, who's living in a rental nearby, has all the consents, permissions and plans in place to begin her renovation. And she starts with demolition. Oh, yeah, baby. The lean-to structures on both sides of the hall are going, so the original curved form will stand alone, clear and defined. Tess got a quote for the whole demolition job on site, but when it came in at $30,000, 
she decided to do it herself with a little help from her friends. Her project has attracted a lot of attention in the neighborhood, and she's not short of willing workers, including Builder Campbell, who lives just up the road. I can just really see her whole vision behind it and just the glass house in the middle, just the vision, just the scope that she's got there. It's just, oh, I, I just think she's a wonderful lady who's got some amazing vision and just her tenacity is just, it's, it's awesome, riveting. Are you pulling it? The lean-to is taken apart very carefully because Tess's priority is to reuse as much of the old building fabric as is possible. That's exactly as we planned it. Much of this old building material is going to a new home, literally. Campbell's son is going to give it a new lease of life. These days, we've just got so wasteful, and we throw away so much good stuff, and then if you can reuse it, it's just, for me, that's really exciting. So to think my son's going to be able to create essentially a tiny wee house out of stuff that was, it, the, to all intents and purposes, would go to the tip, I think that's a wonderful thing. <laughs> to see my view. Check it out. Woo! And as the first part of the old place comes down, Tessa's excitement levels go up. So good. Sometimes I get a little excited, but yeah, so good to see what she's going to be. So it's all going to come together as it comes apart. <laughs> Less is more, don't they say? I'm sure that will reflect in the budget. <laughs> Tessa Kingsbury is restoring an old Sunday school hall in Dunedin to create a home for herself, complete with built-in glass house. As an architect, Tessa's got the design sorted. And to help keep her budget down, she's also involved with the early demolition work. But that comes with its own cost. Everything hurts. <laughs> Everything hurts, especially my back and all my shoulder. Look, because everything's so heavy. And when you're the gopher and you're helping someone else that's helping you and they're the builder and you're the rookie, you do all the lugging and you don't complain. Otherwise, they might not help you anymore. And Tess is going to need a lot of help, especially with that delicate arching roof, a third of which will eventually be clad in glass. Today we're going to remove all the plasterboard linings. It should be good. It'll be really exciting because we'll get to see the, what the roof's really like. The Sunday school ran here for 70 years, but then closed because the hall was no longer fit for purpose. But its heritage and sentimental values are strong for the local community, and Tess's restoration plan is getting a lot of support. Everyone that I've met that's been in relation to this hall have just been shining stars. And everyone just really loves the whole idea. I've got such positive feedback. Tess and her builder neighbour Campbell strip the interior walls and peel back the years. Look at this. Bit of insulation. Yeah. Ratness. Ratness everywhere. And one baby's booty in a rat nest. And it makes me wonder how long that mother looked for that baby's booty. <laughs> I couldn't possibly love this hall more than I possibly do. Is it infectious? It's infectious, right? Absolutely. Everybody loves it as much as I do. There's not one person that comes here and goes, shoot, crazy. Well, not that they, not that I notice. <laughs> I'll keep an eye on that. <laughs> Now, students of military history will know where the cylindrical shape of Tessa's Hall comes from, the iconic Nissen hut. Originally designed to fulfill an important wartime role as barracks, field hospitals, and equipment stores, these huts were constructed from cheap and available materials, were easy to transport, and lightning quick to put up. But they were never really intended to be permanent structures. 
They were often poorly insulated and had a reputation for leaking like a sieve. And the ones that still remain today, well, they've either been extensively renovated, or like this one, belonging to the Fenua Pai Air Scouts, serve a very simple function. I mean, that might make a great quartermaster's store, but would you want to live there? That's a bit of a stretch. And yet, there's so much to admire here in terms of engineering elegance. These delicate curving trusses and walls and roofs as one continuous element. Brilliant. And even though this looks big on the outside, when you step inside, it's even bigger. And so I think that's Tessa's challenge. She's got to hang on to that design intelligence, the character of her Nissan hut, while she transforms it into a modern, comfortable home. It's been a busy first five weeks on the build. The first lean-to is gone, and so are the old foundations. New foundations have been dug and services brought up from the road. Now, the old roof is being taken apart so the new one can be constructed, something the builders know will be a real test. The curve's always a challenge, rather than dealing with straight square walls. We're having to construct these blocks that follow the curve all the way around the roof, which is going to carry the glass. We've also got to make everything line up with nice grid lines throughout the whole building, so everything has to be done pretty spot on when you've got an architect standing looking over your shoulder. <laughs> As architect, project manager and client, Tess will be all over every part of this build and the big curves she's bought. I foolishly said two years ago, and I really hate arches. <laughs> and then I realised I just bought a giant one. Um, Architects like it square quite often, don't they? <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> Look square on the plan. <laughs> There's going to be a, a fridge here. If you could just find a, a fridge with a curved back, that'd be great, so I could push it up against the wall. <laughs> oh. That curve will throw up all manner of curved balls, but the glass panels may also cause unforeseen issues between the guests staying in the studio and Tessa's living space at the opposite end. Given that there will be 18 faceted pieces of glass up and over, and you've got two effectively separate residences, I've got no confidence that I am not going to be seen in the shower at my end through a weird bounce reflection. And I'm just going to have to deal with that by either wearing a swimming costume in the shower or getting some spray paint up and blurring out that one piece of glass which lines up with, you know, the bedroom at the other end. One thing I've learned already with Tess is to expect the unexpected. Even so, her next trick caught everyone on the hop. We're ready. This is Buddy. Because he's my little buddy. <laughs> when he first came in the little box, and he wasn't meant to live, so I'd sit by his box and go, oh, buddy. And then when he decided to make a crack at life and he was chewing everything in my house, I'd go, buddy. <laughs> so buddy stuck. Do it again, buddy. As the build continues, Buddy's kept safely out of the way. But Rex, the big tree, is in the way, wrecking easy access to the site. For Tess, though, there's no excuse for carelessness. Rex took a sucker punch by someone that will probably be wishing he didn't. A skip relocation exercise. Um, so our guys were yelling at him to stop, and he didn't. So we split one of the tertiary branches up there. Yes, I might go full Game of Thrones on that one person. Heads will roll. So that inspired the sign. And all the old gorgeous people who came out of church last Sunday said, well, we can see the sign. So if 151-year-olds can see the sign, so can skip drivers.
By late spring, the painstaking restoration of the curved roof continues. For Tess, the finish line must seem like a long way off. I tend to hit Mondays a bit tired because I spend the whole weekend here. So I hit Monday mornings feeling like, I need a weekend. <laughs> Don't tell my boss. Today, the steel portals are due to go in. An exercise demanding very careful navigation around wrecks. No one wants to witness Tess going full Game of Thrones again. Very close to Rex. Woo! Satisfied for now that everything's in order, Tess heads off to her day job. And when she returns at lunchtime, several of the portals are in place, ready for inspection. Oh, buddy, delicious. Cheerio, be careful. Is that just not the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? Ah. You know, it's just great to give the old girl a bit of a boost, but keep her existing structure. It's really important to me. It's a sight for sore eyes and flagging energy, that's for sure. But finishing the curve framing and then installing the glass is a huge job, and Tess needs a lot of fuel in the tank. This project is only going to get a lot more demanding. Restoring the curved roof on Tessa Kingsbury's house in Dunedin remains the focus of the builder's attention, and progress is slow but steady. The complex arch steel has been finished, the framing for the dormer windows is in, and blocks to support the glass are being made up that follow the curve all around the roof. I'm very excited about the studio, and I've started looking at the studio as my holiday home. That will take me three seconds to get to, so I want it just right. No one's built a batch this close to their own home. <laughs> Restricting the living areas to the two opposite ends of the house is an unusual decision. Tess could have just had one much bigger space instead of a small residence and that tiny studio. I think a lot of people are concerned about how small the mezzanine is, but the whole concept behind it is it's got three empty spaces. It's got up there, down here in the entry. So if you want to sleep in that area, this area, or that area, you can. You can, you know, choose your own adventure. So I love the whole flexible idea. But although both living spaces are compact, I think they'll feel much bigger with the glass house in between. I'm still doing a lot of research on what trees to put in here. It won't be a tomato garden. It'll be more of a formal, structured, screening garden. Although planning the planting is important to the success of the greenhouse, it has to be built first. And constructing the curved glass roof is certainly challenging the builders. We are actually pushing the boundaries a wee bit on some of the aspects of it and really I'm starting to lose my hair. <laughs> but once again, like, who else has done this? Having the glass house centrally between two residences, anyone I've spoken to and showed them a the plan, they're like, holy, this is, this is really out there, uh, which I think is great. Tess was expecting the roof glass to be delivered before Christmas, but there's been a delay. So into the new year, the builders continue elsewhere, and I come to check on progress. Tess. Hey, Tom. Hey. How are you? Yeah, good. I'd knock on a door, but there isn't one there. No, there isn't. things. Good, good. Great to see you. It's an entirely different building. It seems like a simple shape, right? It's cylinder, yeah. easy to build, but not out of straight pieces of timber. No. Flat pieces of glass. There's a lot of head scratching, there's a lot of talk time. But it'll be worth it, right? It totally will. 
The intricacies of constructing a curved roof are fascinating, but it's the glass house itself that I think is the most extraordinary point of difference in this project. I mean, this is not a little glass house come potting shed in the backyard. The scale of this space could fit a forest. Ah, oh, we're down in the guts of the building. We're below the old floor level here, right? We are, and we're going to fill her up to about my thigh height. And then the big question is, there's going to be one primary tree. Do I go for a deciduous tree and have a mess outside and a mess inside when both trees lose their coats? But that will allow the winter light to come through to my end. Or do I go evergreen, but then block the winter light from my end? That doesn't sound like a good idea. Right, and there's a privacy thing as well Absolutely. between the two ends of the building. Yes, so only people I know very well will be guests at the beginning. <laughs> Although the glass for the roof has been delayed, Tessa's build as a whole is still on schedule, but I do wonder how the budget's going. I think when we spoke about money last, I think it was 480. And now? Now I know that we are loosely looking at around 600, and I blame me. <laughs> OK, well, that's honest. There's a lot of great things. Um, there's a lot of great things that I've done in my life and I relied on that level of naivety and stupidity, if, if that is humbling. Um, no, 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 naivety's great because, you know, without that, you wouldn't do half the things you actually exactly, end up doing. Exactly, exactly. I'm, I'm with you on that. This has always been a project that resists classification and a great joy to observe. So what have we got now? Well, you might think at this stage that Tessa's focus should be entirely on the nuts and bolts of construction. Bread and butter stuff like walls, floors, getting closed in. But actually, there's something else going on. There's this great excitement about the possibilities of this project. This hybrid building, I think, is going to be a lifelong experiment. And we're just seeing the beginnings of that. It's now been 10 months since Tess and her builders started work on the old St. Michael's Sunday School Hall. And today, the new roof is going on. Staying true to the heritage values of the hall is something that's always been important to Tess. And the new corrugated iron certainly fits with the original Nissan hut aesthetic. I can't tell you how excited I am about the roof. It's a thing of beauty, matte, dark, black. It's just so beautiful. <laughs> but while the iron looks striking, the showstopper will certainly be the glass. And for all the drama it's causing, it better be. This is the most stressful and the most pinch pointy of the process so far. It was meant to go up in two days, but it took six men four hours to do eight panels. So it was never going to happen in two days. So this is the ninth panel that's gone in. So it feels like my ninth baby. As you know, it's um, fragile stuff glass, but this is toughened heat-soaked glass. Is that right, Johnny? Oh! Sorry. Ooh. <laughs> Don't distract the glass, man. There's no question, the glass going in is a milestone in the build. There may well be ups and downs still to come, but as a design pinnacle, Tessa's roof will be hard to top. By mid-autumn in Dunedin, all the glass is in place on top of Tess's cylindrical house. And you'd have to say the combination of glass, brick, and that matte black corrugated iron is striking. The glass has made such a difference. There's just not one part of it that isn't magic. I just love it. 
However, Tess's spirits don't stay high for long. There's a problem with the corrugated iron, and the whole lot has to be replaced. My beautiful roof was discovered to have had a little bit of a coating glitch. So it was a bit of a gulp moment for me to find out the roof had to come off. Fortunately, the old iron is off and the new iron on in double quick time, with no great impact on the building schedule. Now, the tension has shifted inside to the framing at each end of the glass house, in front of the studio and in front of Tess's own residence. 31 panels of bespoke glass are being fitted into the framing, a design inspired by some cherished childhood memories. It is a big moment because this is where a lot of it for me embodies the memories or the memoir of my grandmother's glass house because this is where you'll see the random obscure glass panels which sort of represented the 20-something grandkids who, you know, a cricket ball would go through one of Nana's glass hanes and, um, and she would put something random in its place, whether it was a different pattern glass or a bit of plastic or a bit of plywood. So these are the walls that will express that and sort of pay homage to the glass houses of, of my backyard youth. Oh, my God, that's an exciting floor. It is definitely the hero element of this dish, and no, nobody wants to screw this or any of it up. As Tess says, fitting the glass in the frames is a big moment, and it is for all the wrong reasons. house. I think we need to do that um, another 500 times. Ooh, great, it was good to get stuck in there. <laughs> Things have progressed nicely at both ends of the house too. Tessa's own residence is now a long way from its origins as a Sunday school stage. Come in. Gosh, it, well, it, it looks a little bit more like a house. I say a little bit because it's a really beautiful, unusual shape, isn't it, to live in? It's lovely seeing the old doors here. So these are yes. reclaimed? These are state housing wardrobe doors. Oh, right, OK. So there's nothing about this property that isn't tall and skinny. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, right, so well, they, they are lovely and skinny. It's also lovely to be in here with the light coming through now. And it's almost like a sort of reflective water effect, isn't it? coming through to the wrecks, yeah. moving. So this goes back to those connotations you have with the, your, your Nana's greenhouse. And yeah. this means so much more, doesn't it? And I get to see that now, and it's rather magical. The studio is also starting to take shape. 
And Tess has found a great new use for some recycled timber. So these are the old joists underneath the floor, right? Under the floor joists, right. So and we, you see the, the yes. nails were in there. So these are going to be ah, the okay. stair treads. Yeah, they're so rather the, lovely, aren't they? Yeah, they're going to be beautiful. <laughs> ah, there we go. You fall in love with these old beauties, and these are passion projects, aren't they? You've almost got to turn your eyes away from your bank account and just lean in. Where are you at in terms of budget? We are sitting at just over 600000 And I know, looking at my bank account, that we have 150 to go. When you build up your bank worth over 30 years and to watch that, the momentum with which that, you know, it makes me nervous. Mm. Now I've mucked in, I get this green dream. But you have to say, the focus is still very much on those plants. This will be plant heaven, no doubt. But it's a hybrid building and it's also a home. So the big question is, has Tess got the balance right between this fantastical botanical dreamland and a practical livable home? So this is it, the end of a really interesting unorthodox project. And you'd have to say, this is the stage where you get the surprises. And more than that, if anybody can provide a good surprise, it's Tess. So I think we're in for something particularly special. Oh, now that is a building reborn. Hey, Tess. Hey, Tom. How are you? So good. Great to see you. And this building, I mean, come on, there's a little sliver of the old building back there, but I don't think it ever looked that good. And now, oh, glass and steel and just beautifully finished. Come in. Thank you. Now, that's the moment we've been waiting for. I mean, it's not quite a forest yet, it's a kind of a baby forest. But that combination of the plants inside the building and, and this variety of plants is so joyful, successful. It's my favourite place. But yeah, it's going to evolve and I can't wait. I get as excited about this garden as I did about the building when I first saw it. The thing that I'm finding hard to get my head around is it's so different from what it was. I mean, it's unlike anywhere I've ever been before. How often do you say that? I say it every time I come in. <laughs> well, you, you're right to. And there's buddies. And there's buddies. <laughs> so this is the residence. This is the residence end. This is you, this is your house. This is me on a stage. That's the line of the stage, is it? This that board is. here. So that's the original stage, and this was the extension of the stage made with the original boards. And then through a, a not very opaque wall is a bedroom, no privacy, glass everywhere. That's right. I like the play on extending the glass house transparency all the way through. There's nothing that thrills me more than waking up in the morning and have that delicious sun coming in. You're dead right. Then this kitchen here, pretty accurately built cupboards. They are. And I've just clocked, so there's a flying trike over there. There is a flying trike. So the trike was my father's. Right, OK, yes. Your father's trike flying at the top of the Sunday School Hall, which is now not a Sunday School Hall. They, um, well, show me the normal stuff. Where, oh, where have you hidden the normal Tom, stuff? Tom, you've come to the wrong place. Oh, across the lush green sea. And follow the linear lights, right? Yep. They're pointing the way to the studio. I just love how 
different this end feels from the other end of the building. Uh, you've got all this brick here. Beautiful. Now, these stairs are looking great. Yeah, do they look familiar? They do. I, re I remember those. And now this is great because I'm now standing in a place you can never stand in the old building, right? Levitating above the floor. And such a treat of different things to look at. It's great. Very lucky guests who get to stay here. I love it. And I, you know, they could be kicked out by the owner because I've looked at this end and thought, wow, gosh. And people have said, why don't you live in this end? But I know that the grass is always greener, which is probably the inspiration for the grass, because uh -huh. if I was living in this end, I'd be going, gee, that end would be better. It sounds like you're going to be in both ends. Yeah. So after all of this effort to get here, what does it feel like to be here, living here? I love it. I love the different times of day. I love the different weather. The fact that whatever is happening outside dances across the glass house. It's a place where you can break some rules. And I like to do that. I think I've... That's... We've, we've witnessed that. <laughs> yeah. And you've made this. It's all you. Oh. Congratulations. Definitely not all me. There has been a cast of hundreds, and everyone that has worked on this project, I feel like they're my new Dunedin family. They are superstars. So to get to this point where you have this incredible building that everybody will love, how much has it cost you? I originally thought this end would cost 150, the glass house would cost 80, and the other end would cost about 250. So we are just under double. Just under double? Yes. What is that? We're sitting in between 900 and a million. On the one hand, a budget that's gone over by 100% is a scary thing. But on the other hand, a building of this quality that's so unique and brilliant for under a million dollars in New Zealand nowadays yes. uh, is, is, is phenomenal. I have no regrets, but of course I'm going to have to say that. <laughs> Everyone that's come here has said wow, and I get to live here for the rest of my natural life, and I get to celebrate everything that it represents. Will this building hold you in Dunedin? Absolutely, it has. It's already happened. It just feels like home to me. This is what dreams are made of, and this is what I dreamt. Designers often talk about the fun stage of a project. Those early halcyon days of imagination, creativity, vision. And then inevitably, the adult pragmatisms come and gatecrash that party. And so you may end up with a pretty muted version of that vision. But not here, you see. Tess has resolutely refused to limit her imagination. And now she has a Narnia, a magical, enchanted secret garden within her home, within this building. And what a building. And so I think there's a lesson here. OK, employ a very clever architect. But don't stop dreaming. Listen to the voice of your inner child. Because if you do, Look at where it might lead you.